Hey guys, it's Stephanie. Wait, should we change our intro? Should we change the intro? I don't know. Well, say hi. <laughs> hey, it's Stephanie. I'm Trey. <laughs> Welcome to your weekly dose of BS. You're still getting a bunch of BS. <laughs> Speaking of BS, I have a car update for you that I don't like. Well, Wait, the car have, that was stolen or the yeah. car that Travis is taking? Oh, well, that's a whole different situation. <laughs> that one's fun. My stolen car situation. So I told you this process has been super easy. It's been great. Turo's been wonderful. Well, I ran into a big problem okay. this past week. So um, Land Rover calls me. I forgot that I ordered this car like a year ago. And I really just ordered it for shits and giggles. Let's to see be if honest. I liked it. He ordered multiple cars like a year ago. Well, yes, I did. I liked my, my <laughs> options when time comes around. And actually, conveniently, as I was going to pick up or I was I was going to see this Range Rover, Mercedes called and said, hey, your G-Wagon's ready. I was like, oh, my gosh, the Lord's working today. <laughs> uh, but that one's going to Travis, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so I go see it. And I'm like, wow, I actually really like this car. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just like see what the numbers look like. Like, I just want to see what the interest rate would be because interest rate right now on cars are it's crazy. So I have not, ha or Troy has not paid off my car yet. They're in the process of doing that. Um, but they wrote me a total loss letter and said, just submit this um, to the dealership. This is totally normal, and they won't have to show that your other car is, you know, coming off of your credit in order for this one to move forward. So I sent them that. They sent that to a bank, an immediate denied letter. Ooh. And I was like, why? Why? Well, they were confused, too. They were like, what have you financed before? What was your other car payment? All this stuff. And everything lined up, and they looked into it a little more. And they denied me because the letterhead was from Turo. And I was like, why does that matter? Uh huh. Because apparently it is against your auto loan to lease out your car. That makes sense because then things like that happen. Things like happen to you happen to people. Well, because they want more money <laughs> if you're going to make money on the car. They basically explain it's kind of the same situation if, like, you buy a home as if it's your personal residence and then you Airbnb it out. The bank wants a little more interest if you're going to be doing that. But don't you also think they want more interest, not because you're going to be making more money, but because of the liability associated with you renting no, a house? No, they still have car. insurance on it. That'd well, be an yeah, insurance but... thing. Okay. So there's no, I mean, the payment will still get made, yeah. you know? Like, it's like almost like the payment would get made well, even easier that way. Yeah, well, that's so, weird. So I, like, kind of in a panic, they were like, all right, we think we can get this approved without your total loss letter. And I was able to. So I was like, oh, uh, I have to buy a car the next, like, three days or I am screwed. Yeah, because nobody's going to no give one you would a touch. So if Turo paid it off, apparently it shows that Turo pays it off because then they hold the title to the car. I would have been absolutely screwed. And I would have had to pay cash for some you know, little beater car. I've been so sad. <laughs> so ridiculous. But crisis averted. But just anyone out there that Turo's just know that that is against your um, car payment contract. That's crazy. So I mean, I do know it. with homes because I did buy a home and then met Travis like six months after I bought a home. And mm -hmm. I was like, this is awful because I'm never going to live in this house. I think I lived in the home for maybe six months and then we were engaged mm -hmm. and then I rented it out. So I do know if you rent your home out, you, it's, I think it's harder to get a loan. I think yeah. the interest rates more. You have to have it's, it for at least a year. Okay. And not with North Dakota in my situation. Yes. So Trey. So, but I did, I was able to buy a car without, I was going to be walking everywhere. You want to drive me somewhere? Oh, heck no. You would drive my car. I do not. <laughs> I do not. I do not. Before I came here to meet Trey, I went to a Valentino luncheon and I always for like, I'll get all these like invites and I told Trey, I'm like, I have to start reading them because I just skim over them and I'm like, oh, lunch and She's Valentino. Valentino lunch. <laughs> like, yep. I'm in, right? So then right before I go there, I'm looking at the invite just to make sure, like double, triple check that the location was correct. And um, in there it said, we have like this like celebrity uh, stylist who's going to be there. So pretty much it was like a shopping event with a side of lunch afterwards. And I was like, oh. well, dang it. Um, so, but yes, I feel like every store right now, I was telling Trey, is doing this where they are bringing in stylists and kind of having these events for you. Mm -hmm. But it's so much pressure. Today it was like 20 people, so I didn't feel the pressure. But Trey and I have another event on what is it tomorrow tomorrow oh god at louis vuitton and i'm a little nervous because if it's just trey and i then that's a lot of pressure to buy something that you may not even like oh 
I am not nervous. What's we are not buying anything that we don't like. Are you kidding me? You think we're just gonna spend thousands of dollars because we feel bad? At, not in this economy, I'm lady. That, I'm that kind of person, though. I am that person. Well, like, I'm not. Somebody could tell me something looks good on me, and I know it looks horrible, and I will buy it. Well, don't I'm like, worry. Well, dang. I'll be there to say, yes. yeah, we're actually not gonna do that. Yeah, they have some stylists coming in. I personally hate the idea of a stylist. I know what looks good on me and what doesn't. So no one can magically change my mind. Well, I will say, I did hire a stylist for the first time, what was it, last year, and it did change my life because... Well, yes, but that's like... And, you know, they can go to different stores. When it's just yes, like one but it's particular like one store, store yeah. you hate the collection, the buy. Exactly. No, the person that I went to, they had like a whole, like all of Highland Park Village to choose from. And it was a good thing. And they told you how to style it like different pieces together. So I felt like I went away with a lot of different yes. outfit options and I do wear all of them very often. So it was worth my time and money. But this, I'm like, I don't even really wear yeah, Louis see, Vuitton clothes. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you own three Louis Vuitton pieces. So how you got invited to this, I don't even understand I that. I have no idea. Own, because you thought that brand was terrible up until I about mean, a year and a half ago. I have no idea. I did go to Italy. And if you go to Italy, of course, you can buy things a lot cheaper. I think it was like 30% cheaper. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. So I got two coats for like such a good deal. Well, one of my coats started to unravel. So I took it to the Louis Vuitton here, mm -hmm. and I was like, hey, can you fix this? Fully expecting to pay. It was expensive. No place would touch it with a 10-foot pole. Oh, my gosh. Because it was Louis Vuitton. Yeah, we walked in there, and she's like, just however much it costs. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> I was like, she paid X amount of money for this coat. This thing should not be unraveling. I'm a good person so, to make this store. No, he really is. So anyway, so then I go and pick it up. Like, two weeks later, they're like, because they have somebody in there that, um, like, fixes clothes, that, um, does like garments um, if anything goes wrong. And I fully expected it to be, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars and it was free. So maybe they were As like, well, if this been. girl bought this coat, then sh maybe we she'll can buy more. Yeah. And I did buy my sister a purse, but I don't really buy, I don't shop at Louis Vuitton that much. Well, I'll be sure to tell the stylist tomorrow that the first thing you bought from them unraveled. So <laughs> we'll see how much they can sell you tomorrow. Now, listen, just a small little PSA for every designer in DFW. When you invite Stephanie to these events, they're, you're normally expecting her to spend all sorts of money. Most of the time, we leave there having ate your food and having yeah, drank your drinks. that's very, very true. Very, you take very a loss yes, when you send up true. an invite. So just, y'all keep sending them, but I'm just letting you know. Yeah, this one today was great. It was like 20 people which you know I don't Did like a lot of eat? people well that's the bad part I didn't oh. read it so it was lunch but lunch started at 1:30, and what? then so and I headed straight here before I went first I went home and changed because I was like I need to be in cozy clothes to do a good <laughs> job for the podcast I cannot stand feeling uncomfortable um so I went I drove my little bit home and changed but I did not eat I had some nuts yesterday from the car shop that we went to we went to bentley to check on my car because they have oh, yes. another car that's the exact same color and i was like let me just see what this looks like in real life um so i ate some nuts on the way here oh wow okay <laughs> that's well my, that's my life that was a waste of a good outfit then yeah that was it was such a waste huh. it was such a waste okay Okay, so Travis is getting a new car today at, I believe, 3 or 4 o'clock. Yes. And um, he did not order this car. Trey did, like, did. three years ago or something crazy. This is an emotional moment for me because I ordered this car three years ago, and then they called me, and they said, it's, you know, going to be ready soon. Do you want it? And I was like, ugh. And I... I was like, I've waited so long for this. I'll be damned if I give this to Mercedes for them to sell at some crazy markup. So... I offered to a few different people, and Travis called me one day and was like, hey, do you still not want that car? And I was like, yeah. And so he was like, I'll take it. I was like, great. So I feel like I'm adopting out my child yes, or something. Yes, he really is, yes. Well, so Mercedes is so weird, especially about these G-Wagons, because they're just, I, I don't know, they, they just are. They charge And if this... you listen, do not tell on us Yeah, don't tell on us, because I want to tell yes. you a secret. So, <laughs> so I... Tell this guy, we kind of change some things on the build of the car before it goes to be made and kind of make it what Travis would like. And I, for some reason, always get very masculine cars, which is just so confusing to me, too. <laughs> so there wasn't a lot he had to change to make it look very manly. And um, the guy called me a few days ago and says, hey, your car is going to be here next week. And I had to, at some point, tell him the car is not going to be in my name. It's going to be in Travis's name. And Travis wants to put it in the company name. So um, I had a choice in that moment. I said, do I either tell this man that this is my father-in-law or... <laughs> 
do I say this is my sugar daddy? I met Miami three years ago. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you I made the wrong choice. I told him that's my father-in-law. Oh, my God. But, but Travis doesn't know that. I told Travis that he's my sugar daddy. I met Miami three years ago. <laughs> and he calls me, and he was like, what? Uh, and I was like, yep. He goes, did you tell him I'm the top or the bottom of the relationship? I was like, you can figure that out yourself. Oh, my God. So I'm really excited. I've been practicing my, like, thank you, daddy. That's how I want to say this. Whenever <laughs> he gets the keys, I'm going to really gay it up. And oh I told God. Travis, you better dress the part. Otherwise, they might not sell us the car. That's very true. So, yeah. yes, Travis is getting a car. Before, I ordered a car 10 months ago. I still don't have one, but my husband's getting one tomorrow that Trey ordered. Yeah. So you are doing the Lord's I'm work. I'm planning, like, my photo. I feel like we should, like, both be on the hood. Oh, yes. Something. something really cute, you know? Yes, yes. That's so sexy. But, but this could be weird because this man's going to think that he's my father-in-law, and Travis is going to think that he's my little gay lover. So yeah, this could confuse. He'll have funny. something fun to tell his wife tonight. Yes, he will. He will yep. have something very, very fun but to tell him. I'm very excited <laughs> for him. <laughs> have you watched Ultimate Girls Trip yet? No, I'm not. I, and I know you told me to. I have not. And I know you told me to watch it. I have not watched it. Um, is it good? I mean, I think it's going to be pretty good because I feel like a lot of messy people are on it. So I understand why it now takes them so long to air these because most of the people on the show just got done filming their season. So for context, Heather got home from New York. She was in New York three days prior with Jen for when she or when she confessed. Okay. So it was a very quick turnaround. So all of Salt Lake City had to even air before this could happen. And Heather's kind of like definitely still processing like my friend just confessed when she told me she was innocent and all this other stuff. Heather and Whitney are kind of still in the middle of their fight. Um Giselle and Candace are still in this weird fight, but they also like kind of got to leave it behind because this is a different show. So I now see why it takes so long and I'm just still I'm honestly more excited about the next wave of So Girls let me ask Thailand, you this. So if Jen just said she was guilty, do they push that narrative a lot on yes, Girls it's Trip? Yes, the or... first thing Heather okay. talks about. So it, that it's worth watching for that alone. Now, I will tell you, what I'm tired of watching is Housewives complain about being on Housewives while filming Housewives, which is kind of what Ultimate Girls Trip has turned into. Like in what way are they complaining? They're just like, oh, it's so hard in my city, and I had to do this, and this happened to me, and this. You know, it's so I've been on the show for five seasons, and it's just like, it's almost this weird, like, let's stroke our ego circle, but also like, I have it so hard in New York. And yeah, I don't know. It's weird. But what do they say is hard about it? Like, give me one example. Maybe they're not saying it's hard. They're just complaining about it. Like the girls or the job or? Um, Both. They're all just talking about their own cities too much, and I don't want to hear about their city. I want to hear about like you want it to be like them. Housewives, where they go on a trip and they're not famous and they're not from TV yes. show, and you watch I don't, that. Let's not acknowledge that you're famous. They acknowledge too much that they're famous. Yes, like they talk about followers and this and whether I got this from the show and this was me before the show, and it's like okay, thank you. I get that. I so get it's that. like a behind the scenes, I guess, is what it's supposed to be. But um, Pepsi, but I, who is the um, like host of the house, uh-huh. he is the breakout star in this series. Like the soda drink? Well, like his name is spelled Pepsi. like the soda drink, okay. and that's his name, but he his name is Pepsi. He runs the house, like the house manager. And he is and he amazing. And he's the breakout star. Really? Yes. Ooh. Who I'm not particularly, like, keen on is Leah McSweeney. Why is that? I don't know. I'm just not. See, because I feel like, okay, so only Instagram-wise, I feel like she is kind of living her best life after her show's over. Maybe, but she's not acting like her show's over. She's not acting like she's not coming back. She's not acting like New York's not coming back, which, by the way, New York still has not come back. Let's yeah. talk about that. Um, so it was just kind of weird. I also did not like um, Giselle had a real issue with Marisol and Alexis speaking. They kind of just go in and out of English and Spanish, uh-huh. and she had a real issue with that. Oh, really? Yeah, she was like, do not do that around me. And they were like, uh, well, that's just kind of how we talk. Well, yeah, and that's also their first language. You yeah, know, and like she that's... felt like they were talking bad about her when they were speaking Spanish because her kids do that to her. But it's oh, like, my gosh. Huh? So, I don't no. know, I have not finished it, but if you're interested, Ultimate Girls Trip is on Peacock. And it's so... It's worth watching. Worth watching. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Carrie Birdingham kind of does that, but, you know, Spanish is her first language, and mm-hmm. if she's with somebody who's... First language is also Spanish. She'll 
Yeah. You know, go back and forth. And I, I, I guess I just, it doesn't bother me. I'm like, well, talk about me if you want. Um, that's one thing about housewives is I feel like you hear enough bad things about yourself that doesn't really bother you as much mm-hmm. after a while. Um, but I do agree with you. I've not watched Girls Trip. I will by next week, I promise. Um, but I do think that they, you have to go in and almost have it a, a trip with girlfriends and not say that you're famous or you're on another show yes. or because it's, it's too much. Mm-hmm. I can see how that's annoying. And yeah. that happens every season, you said. Yeah, every season. <laughs> every season. No, I can see that. I can see that. Okay, so this past weekend, my son Cruz did something. If you would have told me two years ago that my son Cruz was wanting to play football, I would be like, absolutely not. I would pay you a million dollars. No way. He was more tennis. He's more individual. Mm-hmm. Like activities. He does not like group events. But this year, he decided to play football, flag football, which is much safer than regular football, right? He's 11. And he really loves it. We have him, like, with a private trainer because he's never played before and all these other kids have been playing for a long, long time. So he invited Trey, my mom and dad, everybody to come in and see him play football on Sunday, his very, very first game ever. So Travis is with Chance because Chance is in this football clinic in Arlington. And... Everybody came in. My mom and dad drove in. My sister and her husband and their kid were there. Trey drove, and it was not very close. Drove Trey in. drove like the 30 minutes to watch his game. So I show up. The game was supposedly on my calendar at 5 o'clock, right? Mm-hmm. And um, this was put in by somebody that worked for Travis. So I just never, I always think that it's taken care of because his team puts it in, right? Yeah. Well, it's in your calendar. So it's in my calendar. Why with address and everything. So I show up at 4.30 because we're supposed to be there 30 minutes early for warm up. So I show up and the, you know, some, I don't know any of the kids on this team because Cruz just started. So Cruz like goes and awkwardly stands and talks to these kids. He really doesn't know that well. And I noticed though, that they're all in their um, uniform top. Mm-hmm. And they were supposed to get them on those days, but all the kids but Cruz had theirs on. I'm like, this is so weird. We got here like five minutes early and like how in the world are we the last ones here? So anyway, so then at some point my mom and dad come in and we go sit down and the game has started. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this game started 20 minutes early. Who knew, right? And Cruz was in a lot and that was unexpected. It's his first year. He's definitely like one of the, yeah, first game ever. Um, and he was doing really, really good, which was also, I'm not going to lie, a little surprising because I went in like not <laughs> knowing what to expect, but I did not expect what he, you know, the effort he put in and what happened. So anyway, so I called Travis. I'm like, Travis, you need You better get here soon because they started the game early. Um, Mind you, there was not a working scoreboard. No, like when at this age at 11, they don't keep score, right? So, but the game is in full effect. So there was no, like, countdown? No, no. No time or anything. They, like, think the refs keep time. So anyway, so Tr- Travis gets there and Trey's there. And then, like, 10 minutes later, the kids start shaking hands with each other. You know, like, walking through the line, shaking hands, like, good game. And I'm like, wait, that was the shortest game. I was like, a 20-minute. Yeah. I was like, minute. this is the best football game I've ever driven to. Trey was really happy. I was like, this is the strangest thing ever. So Travis is like, Travis spent all of five minutes there. And he's like, what in the world? Didn't this thing start at five? And then the other dad was like, no, it started at Four. So anyway, we were a full hour off. The only reason Cruz played is because he got there 30 minutes early. He got there at halftime. Um, it was not, my husband was so pissed off. Um, but yeah, so Trey did come for literally 10 minutes of my son's very, very first game. Yeah. But he scored a point. Like, I thought it was a touchdown because I don't know anything about football, but it's actually like you can score an extra point. He caught somebody's flag. What else? I mean, it was he got the ball and ran with it once. It was very exciting, 20 minutes. We had a little prayer circle in the parking lot for that employee that messed up the calendar. Yeah. Because Travis I, was mad. He, yes, he was furious. <laughs> it was good, though. He was furious. But it was so good. And, Trey, you're such a good friend because I, I do not really know. Am. You really are. I don't know if I, I would I go and watch very many football games. It was good. Well, he, is he playing every week? Every Sunday. Oh, I can't wait. So you just have to show up, but it's exciting. It's really cute that he called and he was like, hey, will you come watch me play football? And I was like, oh, do I say no? But like <laughs> kind of a bad situation to be in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now our running joke in the family is that Cruz is our most athletic child because he did so well. It drives Chance <laughs> crazy. Nuts. Yes, which drives Chance crazy. And That is but, so yeah, true. It's good. Okay, so last week, Zach and I had um, the Wild Rose podcast host on, and we were going over our wedding budget, and they told Told me that they feel like a modern day wedding on average would cost about a hundred thousand dollars. What do you think 
is a reasonable amount to spend on a wedding. Because I was like, that's insane. I mean, my wedding 15 years ago, because our anniversary is on the 19th, was, it was like, I think 70, 75,000. For how many people? Um, There were probably close to 200. Okay, I am getting quotes right now. And after, mind you, I've negotiated almost all of these. I am in shock at how much it costs to throw a wedding. I'm like, Ugh! How much is your wedding right now? <sighs> well... I haven't approved a lot of things yet, but based on what I think I'm going to approve, probably 60 to 70. Yeah. That's a lot I feel of like money. I, I think it's kind of normal depending on, okay, so it depends on what you do with your wedding, right? It really does. Like if you have, if you have to, if you have a venue already, it's a lot cheaper, right? So you're not having to pay for the venue. If you have... I mean, it depends. Like, if you just want to have beer and wine, it's a lot cheaper. No, it's... my wedding's at an all-inclusive, and I'm still spending that much money. I'm like, how? Well, where's... Okay, so where's the bulk of the money being spent? Mm, well, florals aren't cheap. Lighting and DJ's not cheap. That's probably a lot. That's most of it. Yeah, so decoration Yeah. is... So, I mean, because I remember whenever I got married, I think the church was like 2500 and we did the least amount of decorating at the church because it's like a very, you know, quick but service. See, that's where I keep going back and forth because I'm like, those are the things, like those are the photos that I want to be the best. Yeah. Is the ceremony. I mean, I don't know. I feel like for, for us, the ceremony is where we spent the least amount on, like we had some beautiful flower arrangements up at the front, but we didn't spend a fortune on the ceremony. Most of our money went to the reception, which was decorated. I mean, it was already a beautiful location. You have a yeah. beautiful location, so it shouldn't be that bad. I, know. I don't know. I have a girlfriend who got married in Turks and Caicos, and I wonder how much she spent on hers because we all flew there for hers as well. But you know what? Like she had the beach. Like she really didn't do a lot of, decoration I think she had like a beautiful arch and then they had chairs set up and it was amazing and magical and it was I mean one of my favorite weddings I've ever been to and I think part of it was because it was so like simple and fun and like we were like running around with no shoes on and the, our toes in the sand and so I don't know I, I feel like it's, it'll be good regardless I mean whenever you get married at a sit-down you know, Travis and I got married and it was like in a, uh, oh my gosh, like a supper club downtown Tulsa and had the most beautiful views, but you have to decorate the tables. You have to yeah. put some effort into it. You have to do, pay for the food. The, our friends like to drink a lot. The dra mm -hmm. the alcohol bill was 27000 I mean, it was oh, a lot. Oh, maybe I'm overthinking the decor. I don't know. If any of you have ideas, let me know. I will say, I put something on Instagram the other day, and people were like, it's really easy. You just, you save, you budget, and you have your parents give you $25,000. And I was like, oh, is that yeah. all you do? Well, you yeah. Have, no! <laughs> <sighs> I will say, my parents gave us money. Travis's dad gave us money. And then we had to pay for some of it because we went like, over budget. I don't have enough days between now and the wedding to make that much money. Oh, my God. Well, but I mean, I just figure out what's most important to you. I will say... The, oh, unless you the have ceremony. a very wordy or like a full, if you're Catholic and you have like a full mass, I do think the church part is so short. Like spend money on the party. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll cut back on some of the ceremony And also stuff. those are my favorite pictures. I, I mean, I have pictures of Travis and I at the aisle. My favorite pictures are at our reception because yeah. we're having fun and it's not so stressful. And I'm actually thinking about like some of the surprises we have planned. And after the wedding, you're going to be like, oh, I know exactly where your money went. See, and you'll, you'll realize it once you see them. Okay, okay so you have some surprises, mind. and that's I have less yes. complaining to do. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, just it happens once. Spend the money. I know. That's have what Zach fun. keeps saying. He's like, "We're only getting married," and I'm like, "I know, but like, we only have so much money." Yes, and he's but like, gotta tack it on though. It's I don't know. Just spend spend it wisely. Figure out what matters most to you and spend yep. it there. Like try. It was very important for Travis that we had an open bar, but even more important than open bars, Travis is like, I want like good alcohol. I don't mm -hmm. want the crap. I want like yeah. the Patron and the good stuff, right? So that was important to him. And a lot of our budget unknowingly to us went to um, the bar because we had to pay per drink because it was a supper club. So it was, and Ugh. my whole family does not drink. So mm -hmm. I was like, this is all 
Wow. Your side, yeah. Just his side, a $27,000 I mean, so bill? All of my family members do not drink. Like, my mom and dad's side do not drink at all. So, like, our friends and, like, his side were the ones that drank. I would love to see your mom just with a few vodka sodas I would, in her. I think she would be so, so fun. I've offered. I'm like, can I give you some wine? I've offered um, to get her drunk because I think she would be very funny. She's mm-hmm. real sweet. My dad, I would not want to get drunk. I think he would annoy <laughs> the crap out of me. But I could totally get my mom drunk. My grandmother, I'd love to have drunk as well. Oh, my goodness. But you know what sucks when your parents have never drank a day in their life is they truly look at you like you're going to hell every time you order a glass of wine at dinner. <laughs> it's horrible. My parents have never she- She's drink. never had a sip never. of alcohol. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. Mm. And um, so every time, like for my sister's birthday or if I go out for my birthday, my parents are joining us, I feel like my mom is totally judging me the entire time. <laughs> um, it's so wrong. <laughs> Something I am doing, I've kind of like commandeered my wedding shower and I'm throwing my own wedding shower. See, I told you, I will have it in my backyard. I felt I know, like I think we were... that would stress me out too much. What? What is going to happen? I have so many events in my backyard. If anything was going to happen, it would happen at the company Christmas party. I know, but I feel like if, like, you know, a Holman employee spilled something, I wouldn't feel bad. But if someone I knew did, then I would feel bad. I don't know. I feel like it would just stress me out. And you're getting home from a trip that day. So I feel like it's I'm going to do it in my, in my backyard. It's me. We're doing a crawfish boil. Which, do you even know how to boil car- crawfish? No, I've actually had crawfish once before, but it's something Zach wants to do. So he is so going like, to cook it? Are you guys going to have somebody cook it? Um... I don't know. I think we're gonna maybe fly his sister in to like. So she that. does it. Like There's she will cook everything. There's a few occasions everything. in the wedding, so I'm you know just hoping. Oh, that they, they all cook really come well together and like make some boil those little suckers until they're. I've never had delicious. a crawfish before in my life. <sighs> it's a interesting experience. But Travis said he went on a date with a girl a long time ago, mm-hmm. and this was like way before me. Um, way well, I think when he I would first. Hope. Well, yeah, when he first, first, first moved it. Well, like I'm. I don't know if he was going on dates with other people when we first met. I have no idea. But it was when he first moved to Dallas. He was young, and he dated this girl, and he was like, she was beautiful, and he took her to, she wanted to go have, like, crawfish. So, anyways, some Cajun place. And then she ordered crawfish, and she he said, like, he could never take her out again. Like, he was like, I was so grossed out because she was, like, sucking the heads of the crawfish. And he was like, it was so disgusting. (gasps) Like, that was the one and only time. And he was like, and she was beautiful and so nice but it was i was so grossed out by the way she ate craw- crawfish yeah. zach says that's the best part and i was like there is no world yeah, where like, i'm isn't putting that the, the head of that thing in my mouth but well, also did they still have their eyes yes that's oh so gross and you know what else they have their poop oh my god and you no. have to pull the little poop string out no before you eat it Some i won't even don't. i won't even eat shrimp if they don't have the poop out Oh, no. Like, you know, if they don't, like, take the little brown stuff out, which I'm pretty sure is poop. Absolutely, but, it's yes. poop. Yeah. So, anyways, I will try a, craw- I will oh, wow. try a crawfish, but I will well, not suck their heads. I swear to God, that's yep, so gross. This will be a poop-free wedding shower. Oh, my gosh. Well. I can't wait. I was like, Zach, no one's going to throw us a better, par- better party than us. So, just said, you know what, we'll do it ourselves. <laughs> Because last time I heard, one of your other friends was going to do it. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I feel like getting people to coordinate things was more stress and than then, I cared to endure. And then I heard that you have to wear, like, yellow, and it was, like, some, like, Dolce and Gabbana theme or something. And I was like, what the heck? Like, lemons. And I'm like, how am I going to find a lemon dress? A Dolce and Gabbana dress. That was the dress code for yes, that Yes, yep. yes. So I was like, well, dang. This that... one's much more casual. Like, what is the, okay, so what are we supposed to wear? Mm, I mean, something more comfy. Like, you're going to be pulling apart crawfish. It's it's kind of messy. So that is right up my jam. I can no, literally absolutely. go in this. Yes. yes. I like, like, that's more of what I wanted, too. Like, I didn't want some, like, fancy-pantsy, like, nice restaurant. Like, I want to be able to just, like, hang out, play some games. And eat some crawfish And heads. eat some crawfish poop. Oh, my God. Well, yep. I can't wait. Me I cannot neither. wait. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so next week I'm so excited. I have wanted this guest for a long time because, first of all, I love him. I think he is, his personality is so endearing. He's so happy all the time. We are having Justin Anderson on the podcast next week. I am so excited. If you do not follow him on Instagram, you need to. You should. Just get a little glimpse of his personality. He just exudes so much positivity, and he's very much our kind of people. Yes. He keeps up with pop culture. He's also wildly successful um, in the hair industry, and he's just like a good person. So I'm very excited. I did not realize how many celebrities he's done their hair for, but I, I was listening 
um, to another podcast that he was on. Cause I like, mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I know as much about our guests as possible. He's done like, I swear, I think he said like Gwyneth Paltrow, like huge, huge names. celebrities, like huge, huge, yeah. huge names. So we are so excited. So next week, make sure you tune in because it is going to be so, so incredible. And he is going to be an insanely good guest. Yes. So thank you guys so much for listening and supporting. You can follow me at Steph Holman on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> you can follow me at Trey underscore Stewart. You can follow our podcast on YouTube at Weekly Dose of BS, or you can follow us on, on Instagram. Follow, Instagram at, at BS, BS the, the podcast. podcast. Bye. Bye.